to the point. Before you continue, my life began in Para, Nevada. I was born May 15th, 1994 at approximately 12.05 p.m. I grew up there until in my neighborhood, a killer ran around rampaged and killed my parents. Thank God that I was unharmed. He walked past my room when I was 8 years old in 2001 and left. I am now 18 years of age and will not reveal my current location, but anywho, my name is Seth Crutford, and this is my uncle's story, not my story, my uncle John Crawford's story. These are the journal entries of John Crawford before his death in October of 1999. I got these from his will, which it stated, you can own any of my, any of my documents regardless of privacy. You indeed are my grandson. The will was written in ink on January 10th, 1999. I received the journal entries this year. On the will, it said, to Seth Crawford, my grandson. You will receive it when you are 18. When you are old enough to understand the situation, it's now 2012, and I grew the courage to show you guys these entries. These were my uncle's journals. And this is where the story begins. Journal entry one, the accident, 3 p.m., May 15, 1998, 1988. Written April 27th, 1997. Hey, my name is John. When I was born in 1972 in New Jersey, and I had a normal childhood. Several years later, when I was 16, I was walking down the sidewalk. Nothing special. I was a kid that went to a very good high school, which was a magnet high school. I wanted to take the position of being an actor while walking. Some kids drove by with a big blunt object and smashed it into the back of my skull, knocking me onto the floor, only to discover it was a baseball bat. I clenched my head to feel the blood run at the back of my head. A lot of it. I stumbled on the sidewalk to walk to the closest home with someone that I was familiar with. I stumbled to my girlfriend's house, and I knocked on the door, bleeding hard. She opened the door, shocked to find me bleeding badly from the back of my skull. She knew some of this and some of that on medical work, so she let me in. She seemed to be crying. Why was she crying? I, I was confused. I just met her a week ago and we started dating. We loved each other. She let me in and started to talk. She told me that her ex-boyfriend named Jeff or something threatened her that if she doesn't leave me, he would kill her and I, saying it with a knife to her throat. I, I was shocked. They were aiming to kill me with that hit, but at least it didn't do any big damage to me. It just, for some reason, splintered into the flesh, not harming my skull. Her being scared and me being scared for her safety, she asked me if I could sleep over at her house to protect her. I called my parents and they said it was fine, telling them that it was my friend. I got armed with weapons first. I came home after all the stitches into my flesh. I fetched my 20 gauge shotgun, grabbed my blades, knives, etc. I was ready for this bastard to come and harm her. I wouldn't sleep. I couldn't. I just couldn't. The long night. 10 p.m. May 15th. 1988, written April 30th, 1997. When I sat in her bedroom, talking to her about what he planned to do, she replied, He said that he would cut my fucking throat open with a knife and drink my blood! She burst into tears. While I was comforting her, we laid down together. We talked and talked about security issues. Her, her name was Jessica, by the way. She st we started making out. That sort of thing. And out of nowhere, I heard glass shatter downstairs of a window. I heard loud screaming, shouting, Come out here, you bitch! I heard my shotgun walk downstairs, ready for him to come at me. 
The Battle, 11.14 p.m., May 15th, 1988, written May 14th, 1997. I ran down, stabbed once in the throat. As another ran behind me, I dived to the left and stabbed him. I got training from my dad, a veteran. Another one to my left, pulled out my shotgun. His stomach exploded like a water balloon. He fell on his ass, dead. I ran in the kitchen, ones lunged at me with a kitchen knife, getting shot in the fucking face. I went into the backyard just to get jumped over three lunges at my sides, me diving forward. I then stood up and turned around and shot them all with my pal called the two gauge shotgun. It seemed no one was left. It seemed to be empty, except that bastard Jeff. He has to be somewhere. He's gotta be here somewhere. The Encounter 12.18 p.m. May 16, 1988 Written September 17th, 1997 I ran upstairs to see if it, he was up there, and then I heard Jessica scream at the top of her lungs. I ran in to find the most gruesome image I have ever seen. Jessica, with a knife to her throat. And some creepy-faced man, I assume to be Jeff, with a white pale face, black outlines around his eyes, and a bloody smile. I was baffled on the sight. I didn't know which one was more morbid. One, his gruesome face. Two, the fact that she was about to be killed by this maniac. He then said, if you disobey any of my orders, her throat will go splat. You got that? So I did as he said, threw my gun down, got on my knees, and bent down. As, as I did, he then walked over to me and stabbed me in the back. The blade touching my skin felt like a never-ending blaze of pain as minutes turned into seconds. I looked up to see him raping her, pulling her clothes off, beating her to the point she gets bruises, pulling her blonde hair. I couldn't let him finish this! So I got up after he pulled off her bra, her in tears, and said, Goodbye, Jeff! And shot him in the face. The sounds of police sirens put a smile on our faces as we hugged each other. It was over. It was finally over. Our wedding. 12.53 p.m., March 25th, 1990, written December 17th, 1998. It was a happy day. Children threw flowers, parents cried, happiness filled the air. It was like a true American dream. The wedding, the family, the life, the death, that's all that mattered to me. We tied the knot. It was great. The future, 8.34 a.m., December 16th, 1990, written January 19th, 1999. Jessica then gave birth to twins. We wanted to name them both, both of the boys, Travis and Daniel, after my grandfather Travis and her grandfather Daniel. We were happy. She was overjoyed. We're finally halfway done with the American dream. We were both happy. The Dinner June 6, 1996 Written June 31st, 1996 My first journal entry Due to the occasion of our two boys, Travis and Daniel, entering the first grade, both were six years old. We went out to dinner at a really nice restaurant and had a good time. It was calm, yet relaxing. It was pure happiness. When he came back home to find a bunch of police cars out front and a morgue team? We went inside, scared and worried. What we saw in the middle of the stairs 
made her and I cry. My son Travis, dead, bleeding everywhere, seemed to leave a trail of blood as if he was dragged there by the kids' room. It wasn't any better. My son Daniel was left in the doorway, sliced in the neck, arms sliced up, and stab marks in the stomach. Blood covered the house. My wife Jessica fell down and burst into tears, clenching me. I was sad, depressed. I soon that night went into the bedroom and on the walls read the words, Jeff, 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 Jeff. I knew it. It was Jeff the killer. Jessica shocked to the point of weeping. It was the end. It was over for the American dream. If it was, it would be the American nightmare. I only wrote in this journal in the first place because my psychiatrist told me to keep one. So I'll keep on top of it whenever I can. The End October 13th, 1999 Written October 13th, 1999 Dear world, after three years of my children's passing, my wife eventually shot herself in the temple yesterday, actually. <laughs> this is my suicide note. <laughs> Life has been a good run. I loved it so much. I loved you mostly, Jessica. You! <laughs> Jessica, you were my life! Hopefully I'll see you, Jessica. Hopefully I'll live eternally with you. And <laughs> Travis, Daniel, I love you guys as much as I love your mom. <laughs> and I want to hold all you guys in my arms for life. <laughs> so, <laughs> goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> Sincerely. John. A police officer's interview. They killed themselves in a matter of two days. Police found both the bodies of Jessica and John Crawford. They were found dead in each other's arms, both shot in the temple. Presumed suicide at the scene of the crime. We also found the suicide note of John Crawford. No comments. <laughs> <laughs>